Your Excellency, Mr. Governor, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission, it is my proud privilege to welcome you this evening to the inaugural ceremony of the Atomic Energy Center, DACA, and to thank you for accepting our invitation. We are deeply grateful to you, Mr. President, for having spared so much of your valuable time and doing us the honor of gracing this occasion by your presence. Your visit to the laboratories today will leave us with happy memories which we will cherish and which will continue to inspire our young scientists for a long time. The establishment of the DACA Center is not an isolated event, but one of the important milestones on the road to progress. Five years ago, Mr. President, when you ordered the Commission to be reorganized, we sat down and prepared a comprehensive program of work to be done in the atomic energy field in Pakistan immediately and ultimately, a program which was designed not only to promote the economic development of Pakistan, but to establish such traditions as would help the roots of science to grow in a country which had none. Our first task was to build a broad base of manpower and a pool of young, talented scientists, engineers and doctors trained in different fields at the highest level in nuclear sciences and technology. For want of facilities at home, we had to send our trainees to reputable institutions abroad where we could get replacement for them. In this effort, we received generous response and help not only from agencies such as the International Atomic Energy Agency, Vienna, but friendly countries of Europe and America. We then proceeded almost simultaneously with the building of centers of research equipped with such basic facilities as are provided in centers of similar scope and size in the most advanced countries of the world, so that on return our scientists may not feel frustrated or handicapped in the pursuit of their work. I am glad to say that in these two respects of training and building, we have accomplished the goals we had set before us for the first five years. We have been able to train a core of nearly 400 scientists, engineers, doctors, geologists and agriculturists in the nuclear field, and we have built laboratories and centers at different places in the country medical centers for the treatment and diagnosis of diseases with the help of atomic medicines at Karachi, Hyderabad, Multan, Lahore and Dhaka have been completed. For work exclusively on agricultural problems such as the evolution of new varieties of crops, destruction and control of pests, soil and plant response to fertilizers, etc., we have established a center at Tandujam in West Pakistan and laboratories at Dhaka here. We have also completed two big centers, one at Lahore, inaugurated by you, sir, nearly three and a half years ago, and the other at Dhaka, which you will be inaugurating today. Both these centers are multipurpose in character, designed for basic and fundamental research on selected problems of national importance to the economy. You will be glad to know that the first phase of construction of our biggest national research center, the Pakistan Institute of Nuclear Science and Technology at Islamabad, is also nearing completion where Pakistan's first atomic reactor of 5 megawatt capacity for research will be ready by Independence Day, inshallah, this year. <coughs> Both in recruitment of personnel and the building of our centers, we have followed a certain philosophy. Firstly, we have taken in our fold only those who had a first-class academic record and who showed a spark for research irrespective of their domicile or ancestry. Secondly, in designing and completing our laboratory, we have combined beauty and aesthetics with functional requirements. This has cost us uh, a bit more than it would have cost had we adopted the usual PWD standards. But sir, the institutions we are building are not being built only for today but for tomorrow, not only for the present generation but for posterity. They belong to the nation and must therefore reflect the quintessence of the best talent and skills which our nation can produce. Our individual dwellings and houses can be humble and simple, but our national and public buildings should be symbolic so as to inspire us with a sense of history and a pride in our destiny. This should be particularly true of the centers of learning and scientific research. As the great scientist Louis Pasteur had said, take interest, I implore you, in the sacred dwellings which one designates by the expressive term laboratory. Demand that they be employed and advanced these are the temples of the future, the temples of well-being and happiness. 
in all these humble efforts which we have been able to make to translate this philosophy during the last five years, we have been sustained by the thought that in you, sir, we have not only a great president, but a great patron of science with a sense of vision and foresight. But for your support, but for your support and indeed at times your personal intervention <coughs> with administration, we would not have gone so far as we have. As for the future, I submit that the next five years will be the period of consolidation and intensive research and development in the establishments of the Commission. We will unfold before the country results which will make a lasting and imperishable, uh, imperishable contribution to progress and development. First, we will harness the energy of the atom and produce power at a price which will be cheaper than that produced by the cheapest conventional fuel. Negotiations for a 137,000 kilowatt nuclear power station at Karachi are in the final stages and we hope to commission that station by 1969 or early 1970. In East Pakistan, a similar station at the Pabna district at Rupo of 70,000 kilowatt generating capacity is also going to operate by about that time. We have planned a common nuclear fuel fabrication plant for both the stations so that raw uranium can be processed at home. Although the capital cost uh, of a nuclear power station is almost twice the capital cost of a conventional station, the fuel costs are so low that running a nuclear station for its lifetime of 25 to 30 years more than offsets the initial difference in capital cost. At Rupur, we estimate the cost of generation of power to be only four and a half pesos per unit, which would give an accumulated saving of more than 20 million dollars compared over oil, coal, or gas-fired station of equivalent capacity. This will not be the only nuclear power station in East Pakistan, because, sir, even if we burn all the natural gas so far discovered and burn every ounce of coal reported to be lying thousands of feet below Rajshahi and Bogra district, we will not be able to raise the generating capacity in East Pakistan to 2 million kilowatts in 40 years' time with practically no hydro resources left to exploit, with no oil, no coal so far, and limited gas deposits, East Pakistan has no choice but to go nuclear. The earlier this is realized, the better, or else the whole economic development of East Pakistan will suffer. I would suggest, sir, that the recommendations of the Power Commission be implemented forthwith in East Pakistan. By far and large, our consolidation of effort would be in the direction of using radioisotopes and radiation sources in, er in eradicating pests that destroy millions worth of stored food grains, preservation of fish and fruit, evolution of better varieties of rice and jute, prescribing mixtures of chemicals and fertilizers most suited to different soil tracts, reducing the dredging costs of silted harbors, determining the flow of subsoil water in waterlogged and arid lands, treatment of cancer and other diseases, and finally improving the quality of a variety of industrial products. Mr. President, sir, I would like to submit that the days of an individual scientist chewing his pencil in an isolated corner or shaking a test tube in a hut or a barrack are gone for good. In the modern age, we talk of a team spirit and the society as a whole rather than individual. The classical concepts of science have been completely transformed and the future belongs to those disciplines of science which have helped in the development of new sources of production and power. As C.P. Snow has said, I believe the industrial society of electronics, atomic energy and automation is in cardinal respect different in kind from industry that has gone before and will change the world more. It is this transformation that in my view is entitled to the name of scientific revolution. Mr. President, it is this scientific revolution which we in the Atomic Energy Commission have taken upon ourselves to pioneer in Pakistan so that we may not lag behind another 150 years as we did under colonial subjugation. We are conscious of the fact that Pakistan faces some very big problems such as those of population explosion, flood control, water logging and salinity, pests and diseases, low yield of crops, fear of replacement of jute, cotton and wool, our principal foreign exchange earners by synthetics, high cost of power, non-availability of cheap building materials, etc. There are many people, including those in high positions, I regret to say, who think 
that all these problems can be solved by sanctioning the import of machinery for our factories, by construction of roads, dams and barrages, installing radio and television sets based on foreign know-how and foreign technology. Such myopic individuals, or myopics for short, do not realize that an infrastructure of completed projects will mean building the top without a base or a structure supported on props without foundations which could be blown off and destroyed overnight. It is easy to sink tube wells and with them enormous sums of money in the program of reclamation of waterlogged lands. But it is difficult for the myopics to account for the failure of the wells when the strainers get corroded or when suddenly the pipes get choked. Similarly, millions and millions can be spent on the construction of roads which can be washed away with the first onset of the monsoons and the myopics will not know why. Again, fertilizer factories can be set up to produce urea and ammonium sulfate to be distributed at heavily subsidized rates, but in certain soils they may produce only green fodder but no extra food grain. Similarly, our myopics may continue to export gold to import coal or to burn natural gas for the production of power when nuclear energy can be the cheapest alternative source of electricity. I have said all this, sir, only to emphasize that there is no escape from proper planning or scientific investigation and research on the problems which face Pakistan today. I hope my illustrations will answer the skeptics who go on asking the question, what is the use of research? Let me repeat that the problems of Pakistan, such as the ones I have highlighted, can only be solved by the scientists of Pakistan in research laboratories such as the one the Commission has built and will continue to build. I am convinced, sir, uh, that given the freedom, the fun and flexibility of approach, the scientists of Pakistan can help to add to the material resources of the country and produce results which would solve some of the major problems within the next 10 years. Contrary to expectations, scientific research is not expensive. If only 1% of our gross national product could be released for the scientific effort, we will pay for all the institutes, equipment and manpower. Surely the nation can afford this if only there is the will to support the cause of science. The scientists of the country are grateful to you, Mr. President, for creating a new division for scientific and technological research under your direct personal charge and hope that as a corollary to this generous action, we will soon have a cadre of the scientific service of Pakistan, which will give them the status and emolument comparable to the highest paid service of the country. Before concluding, may I briefly describe the facilities for research provided at the Dhaka Center. It has an atom smashing accelerator that fires bullets with an energy of 3 million electron volts, which pierce the nuclei of atoms in the target material and reveal to us the secrets of nuclear structure and behavior of fundamental particles. We have also installed one of the fastest and the only electronic computer in the country, which helps the scientists to solve complicated problems within a flash of a second. We are grateful to the government of Canada for donating this expensive piece of equipment under the Colombo plan, which is a great asset to the center. The, interna <laughs> the International Atomic Energy Day Agency, Vienna, has very kindly donated a strong radiation saw, which has been installed in a heavily shielded room with automatic control so that the effect of radiations on plants, animals, insects, pests, etc. can be studied. For our agriculturists, a large greenhouse with humidity and temperature control has been provided for doing experiments on plants under desired control conditions. The various laboratories of the center are fully air conditioned and have been furnished with basic equipment of latest design. A big library has been provided for scientific books and journals which are vital for the work of our scientists and engineers. Our laboratories, library, workshop and in, 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 in effect, every facility at the center are open to the staff and students of the Dhaka University <coughs> who are engaged in scientific research. For the mutually happy relations between the Commission and the Dhaka University, sir, we are grateful to the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor and the heads of the scientific faculty. <coughs> I'll be failing in my duty if I do not publicly acknowledge my thanks to the architect Mr. Tajuddin Bhamani, contractors Messrs. Yaqub Limited and particularly Mr. Shamim for civil work, Mr. Rahman of Ali Autos for air conditioning, GEC for electrification and Mr. Farooq Khan for furnishing and the members of the staff, particularly the project director Mr. Sharif and the director of the center Dr. Anwar Hussain who have done their best to accomplish the difficult task of making this center one of the finest of its kind in Asia. 
I would also like to express our gratitude to the government of East Pakistan for all the help given by their various departments during the execution of the Dhaka project. I only hope that the excellence of the facilities of the center, sir, would now be matched by the excellence of research work by our scientists. I would like to end with the prayer of Maulana Jami, which reads as follows. O oh God, remove from our eyes the veil of ignorance and show us things as they really are. Cause these unreal phenomena of the universe to be for us the source of knowledge and insight and not the cause of ignorance and blindness. Our alienation and severance from thy beauty all proceed from ourselves. Deliver us from ourselves and accord to us intimate knowledge of thee. May I now request you, sir, to deliver your inaugural address and perform the inauguration ceremony.